Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, the greatest live broadcast in all of YouTube. I'd like to welcome everyone to Episode 4 of Season 10 here. What we do here is we try to create a drawing for you guys inside of 45 minutes. And of course, this is all broadcast live. And uh, that means that there's a chat box here on YouTube. You can ask questions and post comments. And they don't have to be uh, what we're talking about tonight. They can be anything art related. And uh, of course, we'll do our best to answer those questions and address those comments for you. If you put it in all capital letters, that'll help me see it a little bit easier uh, amongst all the other comments. Since I'm going to be manning the chat box tonight, Ashley's going to be doing the drawing and he's sitting right over there. How are you doing tonight, Ashley? I'm doing great, Matt. Thanks for asking. I hope you guys are well also. I've just been getting our materials ready to go. They're pretty simple tonight. The last time I drew with an ink pad and a pencil eraser, so I thought I would pick something that you're more likely to have around the house tonight. So we're going to be working in graphite. And just to remind you, this season is all about creativity and uh, we are giving you guys some prompts to vote on and uh, voting is still open for what I'm going to be drawing next week or at least the prompt that I'm going to be uh, drawing from next week. So you can still vote on that. Uh, in order to vote, all you have to do is go over to the community tab on the YouTube channel. So to get to the YouTube channel, all you have to do is click on the little icon of my face in the bottom of this video, bottom left, and that will take you to the YouTube channel page, and you'll just look for the community tab there. You'll not only see, if you scroll down a little bit, the voting for next week's prompt, but you'll also uh, see the photo reference that we were, were working from this week. So uh, Ashley will have the photo reference up by his drawing paper, but if you want to have that photo reference with you in front of you, you can, of course, head over to the community tab and check it out there as well. So uh, I hope you do that, and there's still time to vote. And at the end of this broadcast, uh, we'll reveal what prompt I'll be working from next week and also reveal the entire prompt, not just the little phrase there for you to vote on. So exciting. Welcome everyone tonight. Uh, Brenda's art is actually asking what brand ch is my chair? Uh, Ewin. There you go. <laughs> to get out of the way and look at the monitor to figure out what that was. Um, so we're going to draw in just a minute, uh, but I'd like to remind you if you're new to the channel, if you haven't done so or yet, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell so you're notified when we go live like this. Also, when I upload static videos, uh, everything we do here on the YouTube channel is, of course, not live. And if you want to uh, check out uh, three of our course videos and ebooks for free, there's a link in the description below. You can check that out. And what am I talking about? Ebooks and video courses. Well, we have a membership program over the virtualinstructor.com, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media. There's also weekly live lessons. So after we're done here on YouTube, we do uh, an hour long broadcast for members and the live lessons are done in series so we can complete a or create a complete piece of art not just something drawn out in 45 minutes um, so for the more longer more intense lessons mm -hmm. you can find those at the live lessons each live lesson is broadcast each week like i said but they're also recorded and stored in our vault so you can go back to uh, the very beginning and i've been doing live lessons since 2012 there's also weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. All of that is included in the membership program. If you do want to check out the membership program, there's a link in the description below. You can check that out. And everyone starts out with a week-long trial for free. Uh, so you can check out and see if the program's right for you. But if you still want to just dabble a little bit, of course, we're offering those uh, three course videos and eBooks. Uh, there's a link in the description below for all of that. And also a link for the materials that Ashley's going to be using tonight, even though they're pretty basic materials. Um, you can check out a link below and those are affiliate links, which means that we make a small commission if you purchase through those links without any extra cost to you. So I think uh, that does it. I think we're about uh, ready to go here. Uh -huh. um, Deborah says, I would like to know what kind of chair you guys sit in for hours. Uh, well, there's a different chair over there, and it is definitely way less comfortable than the chair I'm sitting in tonight. I can confirm that. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, and, um, and I'm also sitting on a, a special pad, too, for all the issues that I've had this year with my kidney stones and chronic pelvic pain syndrome and all that junk I've been going through. Um, but anyway, all right, I think we're ready to go here. 
Uh, again, I'll shout out to people uh, wherever they're from in just a minute if I get a chance to get the word in edgewise. But for now, let's go ahead and switch over to the main camera. All right, so you can see that our reference is in fact upside down and it's supposed to be that way. We're working upside down to kind of take the subject out of context and hopefully help us just see the subject as a collection of shapes and lines that will add up to be a boy playing a little guitar leaning up against a tree when all is said and done. Um, our materials are pretty brief. We've got a couple of graphite pencils. I have an F pencil and a B pencil, which is a little darker. I'm going to start with the F. Um, we have got a kneaded eraser, a regular eraser, and then a couple of stumps. And I think that's probably all we're going to need. Um, we're going to focus on a line drawing first, and then we'll start shading and just uh, see how far we can get into the shading in 45 minutes. But uh, this is um, there's a lot going on in this picture, and I'm really mostly focused on or hoping to capture the gesture and the proportions pretty accurately and hoping that the drawing being upside down will help me do that. So this one, it will be a sketch when we're done and uh, the shading will just take it as far as we can in the time that we have. I think we're ready to get started. And the the purpose of drawing upside down is not just to, to make things more difficult. No, no. Uh, the purpose of drawing upside down Quite is the opposite. To, to kind of isolate what we're actually seeing visually. So we're taking out uh, the the processing of our brain basically. And instead of seeing a boy sitting a play, sitting and playing a guitar in a foreshortened, very difficult figure drawing position, instead we're just seeing shapes of value and textures mm -hmm. and lines. Now this is all based on, uh, this exercise actually is based from the book Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards, which is fantastic. If you're wanting to learn how to draw, uh, I would definitely recommend that book. That is a book that changed my life and uh, made me realize that anyone can draw and, and, or paint. It's all a matter of learning a skill. And uh, this exercise right here actually helps you to understand how we need to see things in That's order right. to draw. So, That's right. Uh, this is not just a, a, a fun creativity exercise here as part of getting sketchy, but it's also uh, a legitimate way to help train your brain how to that, see. That's exactly it, Matt. It's brain training. Yes. And so hopefully, um, you know, often when we see things in context, like an eye, for instance, we recognize it as an eye or a nose, and we stop looking at the reference, and we just kind of draw from our from our mind, from our imagination, and our memory. When the when the reference is upside down like this, we don't really trust ourselves, so we look at the reference a lot more, too. I found right. myself doing that when I've done this exercise in the past, and uh, observing our reference hard, maybe looking our, at our reference as much or more than we're looking at our drawing, is uh, is one of those uh, secrets to drawing. Isn't that right? Yeah. What, the, what, the, I think so. <laughs> I, <it's, laughs> I was looking at the comments at that last part you said. Um, wouldn't you agree? That's how that's how I manipulate people. I, I make a statement, then I say, <laughs> wouldn't you agree? And just keep moving on. So. Yeah, you draw what you see, not what you think you see, <laughs> which Gala Freyan is saying here. I think I just butchered your name. Um, but I, I was thinking, what I was thinking is, we didn't even talk about what your prompt is. Your The prompt that Ashley got right. last week is upside down uh, mm. that was the phrase and the actual activity or the actual challenge is drawing a subject uh, that's positioned upside down not actually positioned upside down although that would be even more exciting uh, but Ashley's already started drawing. I can't so help it. That this, means I, couldn't, I probably I couldn't need keep to start looking at the, the timer. Yeah, you better start that because <laughs> this blank paper, looking at that on the now, screen was you've bothering You've got some me. marks on the side. Before I start the timer, do you want to tell the folks what that is? Yeah, I just, I just tried to find the center of my composition or the proximate center. Now, I don't have a grid or anything drawn on my reference or on my paper, um, but I just wanted to find about where the middle is. My picture plane is six inches tall. I should have mentioned that before. Let's write that here. It's six by eight, and that is in proportion to our reference. So I can use the edges of the picture plane a little bit to help me lay out our first contour lines, and that's kind of what I'm doing. So I found the center on my tape, and then I can kind of uh, make a guesstimation as to how far away um, parts of our contours are, not from just the corners over, but also from the center over. So that's the that's my... Um, my line of thinking there for just kind of finding about where the middle of our composition is, at least vertically. 
Okay, very good. I'm going to start the timer Yeah, let's go now. ahead. We'll get that started. And, and here we go. Let's see. We'll just go backwards here. We have got uh, Central Alabama, the Caskill. Let's see. Somebody grew up in the Caskill Mountains. Um, Arkansas, Woodbridge, Virginia, upstate New York, um, New Jersey, Germany. Hello from Germany. Um, Indiana, Queensland, Australia. Ontario, Canada, Vancouver, Tana Canada, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. All right. Uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, North Wales, United Kingdom, Sydney, Australia, New York City, another West Virginia, Shepherd Shepherdstown, uh, Kentucky, uh, Michigan, a Jersey girl living in Florida there, Central Massachusetts, also another Virginia, Jersey Shore, Bergen, Norway, South Texas, Western Canada, Someone else from the UK, northeastern Tennessee, western North Carolina, all over the place, guys. We're so we're so glad to have you guys with us tonight. All right, so I'm starting with some pretty straight line contours. Uh, we have drawn the the boy's head, sort of like an egg, and you'll just notice about where the axis is. Um, how that might help with where the chin is in relation to the crown. There's if you think about the head as an egg. Um, then it's tilted. So that's kind of how I've begun. Uh, we're going to get some straighter lines in here and then uh, because they're faster to draw and then maybe move them around a little bit as necessary and then go back over these lines with some specific contours. All right, Teresa asks, is the F pencil the same as an H? I believe the F falls between Gosh, Matt, you might have to H help me. H and HB? I think so. I think it's between H and HB. So yeah, it's very the, close to an HB pencil. I think the F might stand for fine or firm. Firm, uh, maybe so. Uh, who knows? It's just um, slightly. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually working with the foot right now. We've got, we've got our head in place, and um, you know we're working without a grid. So I'm following a... You know, gone ahead and drawn it in here, but you can just visualize a line straight up from the edge of the head, and that's actually going to cut through the toe of the shoe that goes off of the page at the top of the page. So, um, you know, this this part of the shoe isn't really connected to the body at all, uh, but it already has a relationship to what's on the page. In this case, the head. So that's my thinking there. Uh, Stella has confirmed that F does indeed stand for fine. All right, super. So I was well, right hope, about something. Tonight, hopefully so. we'll have a fine drawing when we're done. <laughs> uh, Lori says, go heels. I am here, but I love my heels. Um, that is a re reference to uh, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, which I went to NC State and, and UNC Charlotte. So I am not it's a Carolina little bit of fan, a, but that's okay. A little okay. bit of a I natural like state rivalry there. <laughs> uh, but that's okay, Lori. We can still be friends. <laughs> Um, it went, but not in March, right? Brent does art says, I thought the F stood for fun. It does. Ooh, I like that. Stand for I like fun. that better. It stands for whatever you want. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can bring this shoe the bottom F, into the rest of the body. The F pencil and the H pencil are so incredibly close to each other on the graphite scale that it really is uh, not a big enough difference to, to really... Are those Air Jordans the guys wearing? No, they're not. <laughs> but there, they are. There are Air Jordans on my feet. I thought June, you might be seen through the through the camera. Um, but I know what you're referring to, and that was our last level lesson series where I drew a pair of Jordan ones, Air Jordan ones with pen and ink. That's right. Air Jordans, Air Junes, we had all kind of airs. Uh, Buddy says, Ashley, thanks for your explanations. At least I might need a lot of how do you observe hints. Well, um, we're gonna. I'm going to be mostly lining up parts of what I've drawn with parts that I want to draw vertically, like I've done with this line, and also horizontally. So I'm thinking about now um, the second shoe and how the... In this case, because we are working with an upside down person, the, gosh, I, I want to say lowest part of the shoe, but it's the highest since our artwork is upside down. The highest part of the shoe, the heel, is slightly lower than um, this portion of the heel on the shoe we've already drawn. So that's what this line is for. It's to help me find the top of our second shoe. 
Um, so just to point out, Ashley is drawing this in the exact same way he would draw it if it was right side up. Sure. Um, so it's really no different. It's just forcing your analytical part of your brain, whether you want to say it's the left side or whatever, um, the analytical part of how you perceive visual information from getting in the way of you you know, actually seeing what you're seeing or, or making sense of what you're seeing. So a lot of times when we look at a figure, we'd say, oh, that's a foot. How do I draw a foot? And then you would think in your mind, I need to make a foot look a certain way. All the, like all the feet you've ever seen before. Right. And, and instead, we shouldn't be thinking that as artists who are trying to create representational drawings. We should be thinking, what shape is this? What value is this? What texture is this? How can I replicate that texture? Because every time you look at um, a foot, something we've seen before, it's a new experience. It's going to be lit differently or in a different position. Edie says, I missed the first 10 minutes. Why are you drawing this upside down? Well, as you know, probably Edie, that uh, we're doing creative prompts this season for getting sketchy. A little and triangle here. The, Go the ahead, creative Matt. prompt that Ashley got last week, you guys voted on, was upside down. And when you create a drawing upside down, again, as we've just said, it forces you to kind of turn off some of your ana analytical part of your brain. Uh, so that you're only focusing on the actual visual elements that we need to replicate in a drawing. So not only is this a good fun exercise here for getting sketchy, but it's also a good exercise for helping you learn to see as an artist. And um, this was a drawing exercise that really made an impact on my life. Um, it, that exercise is from the book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. And in the exercise from the book, it's a line drawing that you replicate. Sure. Um, and I actually made a video about this not too long ago. Just if you want to watch that video, it's on YouTube. It's called The Drawing Exercise That Changed My Life. And you can go through the process of creating a line drawing instead of this one's going to be a completely rendered drawing. I don't know if I would one. say complete. Okay. It'll be somewhat <laughs> rendered. We'll see how far we get in 45 minutes. Okay. Uh, Lori says, uh, I went to UNCC too, but I married into UNC. It's, it, it is the ACC tournament. Yeah, but right. Lori, you're a 49er. You know, they have a basketball team too. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I know it's, I know it's North Carolina. Everybody loves the ACC down here. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. You know, we're James playing, says, we're playing art madness at our high school right now. Art Madness is like March Madness, <laughs> except we take eight works of art and start with the elite. I'm sorry, Sweet 16. We take 16 works and then start competing them against each other one at a time each day until there's one champion artwork left at the end of the month. It's uh, a lot of fun. Uh, James says, I thought part of this exercise is not name the parts of it. Yeah, yeah, could, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm having a hard time. That, I'm having a hard time talking about it without naming the right, parts of it. Yeah. You can take it to that level if you want. Um, that's fine. That makes it more effective um, and kind of tricking your brain. But for the sake of um, instruction here that we're doing, we, we're still going to have to name the things that we're drawing here. Or Unfortunately. Um, let's see. Uh, Alice says, just got my membership. Oh, welcome, Alice. Last week to the virtual instructor. And I love the content and learning from Matt and Ashley. Thank you so much. Uh, Sandra says, I think the exercise in the book is a line drawing of Stravinsky easier. Yeah, it's definitely easier, yep. but uh, that's okay. We, we don't line, try to do easy you know, The line drawing yet. in the book is sort of out of proportion a little bit. Um, and what I've done is try to pick an image that had some foreshortening so that we would have some unusual proportions as a, sort of an approximation for that. Um. Joy says the last upside down drawing I did with you crashed and burned, but not too uh -oh. bad considering. Uh, do it again. Try it again. There you go. And um, work a little bit right. slower. I have no idea how quickly you worked, but a lot of times that is the key to um, being more accurate. It's just working slower. I, I know we're we've got a timer here going and we're we're drawing fast, but that. That is just an element of drama that makes the show a little bit more interesting to watch here, guys. And you can draw uh, <laughs> at whatever pace you like. You right. don't have to finish in 45 minutes or even stop. You can carry your drawings further. So I was finding or looking for the, the back of the boy's hand, the top of his hand, which is, of course, facing down towards the ground. And I was just thinking about how big the head is compared to, spa to the space between the hand and the head. 
And uh, I just want to make sure the space between the hand and the head is smaller than the head itself. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to slow down for just a minute and uh, put in some fingers. And you've already got quite a bit of information on the surface in just 10 minutes. Gosh, has it only been 10 minutes? Feels like I've been drawn an hour. No, not really. <laughs> All right. Now, I have drawn a person playing a guitar before, um, but the purpose of the drawing was a little bit different. Guitar man, and I don't think there was a head in there. Well, well I'm I've, just I've drawn countless flowers, countless birds. That's right. <laughs> it's okay to repeat subjects, of course. Um, I like drawing guitars. Of course, you can't see much of this guitar, but I like artwork that includes musical instruments anyway. All right, we've got a little cuff on the sleeve there. Now we need a sleeve to go with it. So the elbow, interesting, lines up with the edge of the guitar, and this contour that I started with is part of the arm and the guitar. So we're really trying to separate this, um, this line now into the two objects that, uh, that it's representing. One of those being the arm. There we are. Okay, I'm just kind of going back through some of the comments in lowercase, I think. Okay. Would you use this approach for actual artwork or more as an exercise? You know, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. I do look at my art upside down, especially portraits, and I also look at them in the mirror. Even after they've, you know, they're in process and we're pretty far into an artwork, I will do that again to take it out of context a little bit but also to help me see what I've done with a fresh pair of eyes sometimes when I've looked at an artwork you know in the same way and I'm talking about its orientation for long enough my mistakes start to start to seem agreeable I can almost accept my mistakes uh, but when I look at an artwork that I've already you know been in process and making in a mirror so backwards mm -hmm. or upside down um, the, the mistakes pop out have you done that before Matt yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the mir the mirror trick. So it's very similar. So I don't always ne necessarily work this way exclusively, but sometimes um, partially while I'm in process for the same same reason, just to just to sort of freshen up my um, freshen my eyes. Okay, Lori says, Matt, I'm choosing you and Ashley over the ACC tournament. Just saying. Well, we appreciate that, Lori. Oh wow, um, I'm honored. Uh, let's see. Hosum says, do you think paper animation is still an option to pursue as a career? Like, uh, I guess he's, like South Park? Yeah, I think they're referring to um, stop motion animation. I'm assuming. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean... I, I think uh, it's just like it's a any style. other it's art a, it's form. It's a style that you're choosing to, to use. I think it's just like any other art form. If you can create something that stands out and is unique and different, uh, no matter what the medium is, I think that that's always an option to pursue. Um, you just need to make yourself stand out and be different. So I don't think any form of animation is ever going to die or go away because it is an art form. Uh, but you just need to make sure that the art form that you create is unique and different uh, from what everybody else creates. And that's a good way to get noticed. Uh, Mark says, do you guys play any instruments? Matt does, and I don't anymore. Not really. Um, I'm a drummer. I played uh, drums in a couple of bands. Uh, actually um, been on the radio and uh, actually played with um, some people who uh, are famous now. Um, and um, I still play the drums. Every, well, I haven't in... A few days but i typically play them almost every day uh, i play the guitar too but i am nowhere near <laughs> accomplished on the guitar um yeah. but the drums i've been playing the drums for over 30 years um well that's a lot see. of time but he says lol and i skipped the second part of a concert concert from barclays james harvest tonight lol not sure what Buddy's saying there, but maybe there was a different part. Miss, that I missed skipped there. a concert for Get Sketchy. Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah. 
Um, Ashley, uh, the buddy's saying, Ashley, can you again explain the mirror trick? Didn't get it all. Yeah, just uh, after you've been working on an artwork, <laughs> particularly a portrait, that's when I use it because the, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the accuracy is so um, important when you're capturing a likeness. I'll just hold my artwork up once all the contours are complete once all the edges, maybe even, you know, some shading into a mirror and just see if anything looks strange. And does anything look weird or out of place? And uh, a lot of times those are, those are, you know, proportional mistakes and things that didn't pop out or, or were not as noticeable when um, the artwork is, uh, is seen, you know, right side up and, and not backwards in a mirror. And so that's all it is. You have to do it to find out. You have to hold your artwork into a mirror and see what happens. And sometimes it's not pl not a pleasant experience, and you'll want to race back to the easel and immediately fix the mistakes that you've seen. A scarf and tea says, and you're a country singer, Matt. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Um, that's right. I forgot about your. We're not going to let your, too many people your know other, about that. Your vocal instrument, your only, voice. Only the members know about what she's or what <laughs> he or she's talking about. I, I'm assuming a scarf and tea is a, a female. Um, I, 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 uh, I am not a country singer. I made a country music video based on artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence wrote the song, <laughs> and I just made the video and sang the song. And um, I'm not going to tell you where you can find it, um, but I did tell the members. Uh, yeah, and they found it pretty quick, so resourceful bunch there. Uh, oh, Barb, don't tell people. Don't tell people, Barb. Um, Stella says, I play the guitar in front of a live audience. My dogs count, okay? And yeah, <laughs> of they course do. they do. Uh, let's see. Um, let get to our little boy's face Salamata here. Salamata says, in your opinion, is traditional art, drawing and painting, dying out in a way because of digital art? I'm asking because I'm a visual artist, and I've been told I should get into digital art. Um, I don't think it's dying out. I wouldn't use that word or those words exactly. It's just another medium, in my opinion. Now, for certain artists' purposes and uh, just the way they market their art and use their art, it may be a better choice. If you're working with files and you're sharing files, maybe you're an illustrator, that kind of a thing, then it might be advantageous. Um, but, but there's still an effort to use digital art to, to um, emulate traditional art. And so that tells me that there's still a desire people have to see their traditional art, at least for now. Yeah, I know, you know, when photography came on the scene, a lot of traditional artists and a lot of people That's right, thought that similar. traditional art was going to die and go away, and it never did. And I don't think it ever will. There's something about seeing actual paint strokes on a canvas, actual marks made by the artist, that uh, is appealing to us as humans, and I don't think that'll ever go away. That's why you can, when you look at AI-created uh, AI art, there's something just still mechanical and computery about it. Even though it may look like traditional art, it's still not the same. And I, I do kind of agree and disagree with the person that you talk to. If you're gonna be an illustrator, I do think it is in your interest to, to have digital skills. I, I totally agree with that. Uh, but Why not add them into your toolbox, right? Uh, yeah, because you're, if you're an illustrator, you're going to be working with art directors, and um, a lot of times art directors want changes made. And if you have to go back and make a change to a traditionally created piece of art, that's going to be extremely time-consuming. Um, but if you have to make changes to things that are digital or created in layers that are easily edited, then that makes it so much more to your advantage to, to, to have digital skills. So. It depends on what type of art you're pursuing. If you're trying to pursue art that, uh, where you might be selling your art through a gallery, um, then you can still pursue a traditional traditional form of art making. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, that. it's like darkroom photography has made a little bit of a resurgence as a fine art form, you know? So um, people, are, people are, are wanting to see sometimes what you can do with the chemicals, not just with the pixels nowadays. All right, we got most of our contours in there, and let's see how we're doing. We got 25 minutes to go. I'm going to go ahead and work on the pattern over here a little bit, and the artwork is just sort of vignetted and fades away in the reference because uh, to indicate how we might finish. So we'll just um, keep going. 
uh, with our contours in the grate that the boy's sitting on, and then we'll start jumping into some shading. And we may do some suggestive shading, some simplification for sure. Um, and just to add, uh, it, Carol Ann says, for many studios, digital is a requirement for the sake of uh, rapid revision. And that yeah. Yeah. totally makes sense. Um, just just to, to add on to what we were talking about, I do think even if you're going to be a digital artist, you still need to have quite a bit of experience in traditional art making because a lot of digital art, the whole goal is to make it look like a traditionally created piece of art. Um, so you need to know what a good charcoal drawing looks like. You need to know what uh, a good acrylic painting well, looks like. Well, and Matt, I still use the same processes that I learned with real paint. You know, I'm still working with layers or working with broken color or working in a wet into wet way. Mm -hmm. And so um, the programs are designed, I assume, with the help of uh, or with the um, advice of actual um, traditional artists just to give you know, designers, software engineers, some feedback as to what they're doing. So um, because the programs were uh, designed with traditional media in mind, like you said, you're going to want to learn those techniques and those processes. They just carry over into the next, into the next medium. Um, Jan says, amazing drawing. And Buddy well, says, actually, you. your ability to draw figures is just, wow, you both are real artists in my eyes. Now, one of these... You don't have to get all the same number of holes in the grate, and I'm not sure I am, but I like to find the one in my reference that is, I can't, I can't point on top of the reference, that is horizontal. And so there's one in there, and that's the one I'm looking for now. And it, uh, it almost, the bottom edge of the more horizontal hole almost points right into the corner that's going off the page, almost. So that's maybe how you can begin that one empty space. I can judge level or horizontal much better than any angle. So I think I want to go ahead and find that one as an anchor and help me fill these others in. I may be changing these. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and erase them and work my way up from the level um, space in the grate and down from the level space in the grate. I think that'll be a better, better approach. Um, and you're about halfway. All right. Just halfway. Uh, Jan says, I admit I have less respect for digital art because of unlimited undo. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. But, um, you know, it's, again, that's the reason I like photography, it. <laughs> it's the um, unlimited undos. I'm, I'm sure uh, a lot of portrait, portrait artists, when photography came on the scene, uh, they probably felt like the same way as you. Uh, yeah. they, you, know, you can take a picture now. And if with it, the, you, can with take, the you can take a thousand and pick the good one. Right. Um, In the same, you know, same amount of time you might, you know, might take it. But create several drawings. I, I personally drawing. still have a lot of admiration for the art of photography. Um, so, and I do think that, yeah, there are a lot of ways to, to fix mistakes. Uh, or change things in digital art, but uh, there is still a level of skill that needs to be there in order to be successful. Um, but it does also make it a little bit harder to make your art stand out from everyone else creating digital art. Yeah. That's that's my thing with digital art. I agree. Art. I agree. Now, um, one thing that you can try to to do to make it feel uh, more sort of uh, more your own, not have the the look of everybody else's digital art is to tr to learn to build and make your own brushes and so that's something you can do in photoshop and that's something you can do in procreate and that might um, impart some uniqueness to your artwork and uh it's really that's that's pure art right there i mean if you're making your own materials um then that's from the ground up so you might you might develop more of an appreciation for yourself you know to pursue digital arts if you learn to make your own brushes. I would suggest that. All right, I'm gonna find some contours for the shadows in the arm and the legs, that kind of stuff. We've got some real hard, strong shadows in here. It's pretty much black in the, some of the shadows and just uh, medium or light gray um, outside of that where the sun is hitting. So we're just gonna find some wiggly lines that kind of follow the shadows in here. So um, again, I wanna really stress that I'm looking at the reference a lot right now almost more than looking at the drawing even though the pencil keeps moving 
Um, it's not crucial that these shapes end up, you know, in, in exactly the right place, only that they're there and their character um, is there. Okay. Um, let's see. Continuing with the digital art um, discussion here, Sketch says, I'm strictly a pencil artist, be it charcoal or graphite or color, and I still use my 35 millimeter camera. Melody says, well, I'm going to come back to Melody's. Um, Jan says, to add, I am thoroughly a digital person. Mm -hmm. I have programmed computers since 1981. I do digital photography, but digital art impresses me far less. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and I get it, Jan. I'm I'm a digital person, too, if if you had can, you, you know. Uh, like you appreciate. You don't see all the things that I do that are digitally advances, based. Advantages, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I agree with you. Uh, to yeah, I agree with you to a certain extent. Uh, there is a lot more room for error and experimentation in digital art. Way, way more room for that. Um, so it does. I, I feel like take a, a higher level of skill to create a traditionally created successful piece of art compared to a digital one. Uh, but I do think digital art is just another medium that. Yeah. Still, no one pe people don't need to be afraid of, and I'm not saying, suggesting you're afraid of it, but there are people out there that um, that have a disdain for digital art. Well, I'm gonna remember my own myself. I remember a conversation I had up about 21 years ago over Corel Painter, and how and I was so angry <laughs> that Corel Painter was emulating, um, you know, brush strokes and things like that. So my that my first reaction to digital art was visceral. Um, but I, I uh, after, and it's, it actually stayed that way for quite some time. I really refused to to make much, uh, I'm sorry, digital art um, until the tools got better. I just did not want to make artwork with a mouse. So once we started working with, uh, with like an Apple pencil or some sort of stylus like that, I started to experiment a little bit more. And of course, I've, I've used... Photoshop all along the way. I've never had a problem with Photoshop, but I had a problem with Corel Painter. So I remember having to try to get over that. Okay, um, Melody hard. says, Ashley, it was this artwork harder to do because of the foreshortening? Yes, I would say so. Yeah, you know, foreshorten presents a problem, but I'm hoping maybe working upside down is helping take care of some of that. All right, so we've got some, all of these marks inside of the, inside of the legs are contours for our shadow. Now I'm going to try to find one on the arm here. We'll just start at the sleeve and just try to follow the shadow, almost like you're doing a blind contour drawing. Just keep your eyes, keep your eyes on your reference. June says, whoa, I just cheated and turned mine around. It isn't looking too bad. All right. So that is fantastic. Um, yeah, it's hard. Mine is taped down, so I would have to I have to spin the whole board to see mine. So I won't be able to cheat. Uh, Edie says no one wants art by a computer; they buy art to connect with the artist. I and think that is is more true now than ever before, Edie. You know, I, I believe before there was photography. Um, you know, what artists were doing was a little bit more craft like i mean they were working with their hands and uh, not different than a silversmith and of course these are jobs you don't hear about much anymore but silversmithing and um that kind of stuff it uh, and and even painting of pictures i think maybe in the renaissance i think it was um a little bit more a little bit less about the artist than it is today because art has become more about self-expression um, than ever before in this modern era. So that's a good point. That could be something that helps uh, traditional art stay viable. And someone reached out to my uh, social media manager, um, who, mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, they reached out to them yes. and uh, w wanted to buy uh, the octopus I did oh, yeah. last week as an NFT. Oh, what? yeah. What in the heck? Yes. I, well, you know, you can make your art an <laughs> NFT, and uh, and then whoever owns it, um, you know, owns the NFT, owns the artwork, and when they sell their NFT, the artwork goes with it. So how would you? And then you can I destroy mean, what, the artwork because you don't need it anymore. The it's in the NFT. They would just have the digital version. Yeah, that's Is right. Is there some way you have to? 
embed some type of code in it? I mean, how would you not? Mm, how would you not know yeah, you were in some way? It, a copy? No, no. In some way, it's connected. It's gonna. I haven't. I have been advised to do that myself. You should. You should sell your artwork as an NFT. I have a relative that told me to do that. So, Matt, that's something you and I might have to learn about together. Yeah, I have no idea what yeah. that means. Um, Sketch says, I'm not a high tech guy. I don't have a computer. I barely got this iPhone figured out. LOL. And Sketch, I, I get it too. I'm, I can code a website. I can build a computer. Um, but apparently I blocked my neighbor with my iPhone from sending me text messages. Oh, and I had and no you, idea. And no, he, sure you didn't. I sure did, you right. Didn't. He, he said, you're not getting my text. Let me see your phone. He pulled up and I had blocked him and I had no idea. That well, the fact him. that you gave him your phone to look at <laughs> makes it seem like you didn't do it on purpose. I did do so it on purpose. So that's good. He, hopefully he doesn't feel like uh, you had, uh, we're trying to, trying to avoid him. Uh, Jan says NFTs are always scams. <laughs> and then Orion Nebula says not always, but yeah. Uh oh. Um, Got some learning yeah, now, to do. Now people are asking, "What is okay?" So, All right, I'm going to just start laying in NFT some darker values. Stands for non fungible token. Yeah, that's it. What is fungible? Like, uh, <laughs> what? Well, I've never. What does that word mean? Like, it can't be. It's not tangible. Um, no, can't be copied or um, mistaken as maybe. Um, something else. I'm not real sure. Hmm. Yeah, that's a weird. I'm, that's a weird word. I'm not doing so great as it's like maybe uh, as it's a dictionary. So maybe part of maybe you guys can help kingdom. us out. Part of the fungi, uh, non mistakable <laughs> undeniably. Yeah, and why is it a token? That's. Uh, so the non fungible can, is not so consumed. You, okay. Okay. Uh, so fungible means you can make copies. Right. So, so supposedly it's, it is thought of um, by some as an original work of art. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken... <laughs> Pretty sure it means you it's could, not a mushroom, yeah. You could <laughs> have, uh, yeah. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you could have like multiple copies. Like, could you sell 20 NFTs of an artwork or just one? That's what I'm curious. Kind of like prints, you know. Prints are, and I'm talking about a, not reproductions, but original prints. Matt is the closest thing that I can think of that it might equate to. Hmm. Kind of um, like a print. Jan says, if you own an NFT, you only own an entry in a digital ledger, which may point to where something is or was on the internet. Non-fungible is okay. a characteristic of a digital or physical asset that makes it unique and not easy to exchange or mix with other similar assets, says Gallifreyan. Right. Are you still using the F pencil or have you switched to No, I've to switched the to the B. Okay, so he's using a B yeah, pencil. That, there you go. Not a 2B or not 2B. It is a B. Just, just a B. B. Just a single B. A little extra dark spot there. All right. Now we've got this big shadow in the middle that just sort of pulls it all together. So we'll just darken this area pretty well. Be careful not to lose the very edge of our guitar where there's a shine. That's kind of nice. And there's actually, it's a little difficult sometimes to see the difference between the shadow that's on the ground and the shadow that's on the pants, but uh, that doesn't matter. If they blend in the way you see it, then they can blend in in your drawing. It'll just make it feel more realistic and less like a cartoon. I guess you would say those pants are on the ground, right? Pants on the ground. Pants on the ground. Pants on the pants ground. On the ground. You remember that's that? right. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Connie says my eyes are glossing over with these big words. You know, a lot of times Connie big <laughs> words are words that people just make up to sound smarter. I do that. Like fungible. I I mean I'm not suggesting yeah, I'm totally suggesting that somebody made that up, but <laughs> I know it's a thing. I all words thing. are made up. Uh yeah, all words are made up. Yeah, that's true. Um <laughs> 
<laughs> gonna, Buddy asks, how are shirt. you able to observe, draw, and talk? Well, I'm, I know I'm talking. I'm not sure how the drawing's going, so we'll <laughs> see when we turn it around. Well, we've been doing the, that for a long time. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, it is what we do during the, during the regular day also. So, I've got, I mean, I am usually drawing and handing one student a hall pass, putting in attendance, and um, trying to break up a fight. So, and get the drawing done all at the same time. Yeah, so multi teaching is multitasking. And honestly, I don't know if I'm cut out for it. Oh. Usually I have brain fog about this time of the day. All right, going to get into our guitar's body a little bit. We're just going to push a lot of this together. And immediately I don't address the body of the guitar. So, all right, here we go. Got a little shiny spot. We want to preserve that. John says it needs more shade, and I think Ashley's throwing the shade on there. Oh, somebody's throwing shade. <laughs> uh, right now, I'm pretty much working with one value, just trying to find actually the shades, separate the shades from the tents down to two values, and then we'll break those into a couple of more values, um, possibly. Well, the, the timer is just a suggestion. As we know, yeah, we we try to make it inside of the timer. Well, but there's a little bit of leeway. There's a little bit of time. There's a we little know. leeway, and um, and then you know, as mentioned before, this one may remain partially unfinished. It's an, a sketch exercise that I think is valuable. All right. But once we separate the lights from the darks, it'll look like something. That's step one, right? <laughs> Jill says, I'm so tempted to turn my computer upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Just pick the whole thing up. Yeah, I'm tilting my head upside down too when I'm looking at my monitor here. Right. Um, Brent Does Art says, Ashley, a carbon pencil would have been a good choice for shading this one. Well, Brent Does Art's always about those carbon pencils. He loves those carbon <laughs> pencils. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that would have been nice. Pencils, uh, it's not shiny, is it? No. Okay. Oh, just, no, no, it's not shiny. Okay. Because uh, I know the carbon pencils are really helpful in that regard for yeah, sure. Yeah, the carbon pencils are, are pretty dark, but they you do sacrifice a little bit of keeping a sharp tip for a longer period of time. And um, But those carbon pencils, carbon pencils are pretty awesome. Yeah, they are. Um, especially the black pencils they've come out with, the ones that don't that are graphite pencils somehow, but don't shine. Mm -hmm. I think they have a lot of carbon in them. Remember, I yes. used them for one or two drawings. Yeah, here. I remember. And I do like I do like the way they look. Now remember, we're gonna break the stump out in the last few minutes, and that's gonna help us with the midtones. That's the plan. And we'll use the graphite on the page as, uh, as sort of our palette, and just kind of move it around a little bit. All right. Now, I like this great pattern. I think it's cool. I'm just as interested in, in it as the rest of the drawing, really. Don't Still be too says, careful. Anyone now. doing yoga while watching this is seeing it just fine. <laughs> Uh, Caroline is asking, uh, are you working on a flat or inclined surface? This is a, a no, it's flat surface. Yeah, it's totally flat. Um, I have, there's lots of things on that table that you don't see. It's a huge drafting table and with a camera mounted above mm -hmm. from the ceiling. And um, there are, there's a computer, there's a, uh, a, a Wacom Cintiq tablet, there's a keyboard. There's a drawing board. There's also a uh, some, some keys and a wallet. Yeah, there's a lot Personal of things effects. on that table that have to be on the table in order to broadcast. And uh, so it is uh, a flat surface. Yeah. Ironically, though, I am sitting at a tilted surface. <laughs> I'm sitting at a another drafting table that's much smaller, but it, it is a tilted surface. Mm -hmm. um, 
I like this one simply because I do a better job keeping my head out of the out of the frame. right. That's the problem with filming with a tilted service is your head kind of creeps in the way a little bit. And back when I used to do recordings on this table that I'm sitting at now, which it's not really used for recording anymore, um, I had a contraption that I built that held the camera above the artwork, but basically in the middle of my face. Um, it didn't really bother me, uh, but it was it was able to record just like you're seeing with Ashley here, but I was still able to work on a tilted surface. Um, but that was, it's been years since I've, recorded that way sketch says i love my new favorite castle matte graphite pencil set too brent does mm -hmm. art says carbon and conte that's me mm -hmm. um gallifreyan says just use a mirror above the drawing to see it right side up yeah Knights of Lavender. We all like that name. Uh, it says you two guys complimented each other so much, chatting in and out, chatting and in artworks. Oh, thanks. Oh uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, buddy that. says Ashley, where is the camera? It looks as though we are watching through your eyes. The camera is mounted uh, probably about four feet, yeah, three about or four, four feet, feet above, directly over the drawing. The drawing so paper. We we look at their drawings at a little bit of an angle, um, to keep you from having to see my head and the, the the camera is of course capable of a, of zooming in really close and backing out so i'm sure you've seen before buddy um hoot and holler says which wacom tablet would you or wacom tablet however you want to pronounce it i like wacom uh, i so do too wacom uh which, <laughs> which wacom tablet that's what would I you like. recommend for someone just getting into digital work is bigger better um you know bigger is a little bit of an advantage because you don't have to keep picking up your uh, stylus and moving it back if you're working on a screen, but it is kind of proportional to uh, the area that you're working in anyway. Um, I it's been I do I started with a tablet, um, and then after working with a tablet for about a year, I progressed to getting the Cintiq, uh, which is basically a monitor that you can draw on. And uh, if you can afford to get the monitor that you draw on, I'm sure the prices have come down quite a bit since I bought mine. I've had that since, I've had that uh, Cintiq since 2014, maybe. Oh, wow. Uh, so I've had it, well, maybe 2013. So I've had it for about 10 years and I still use it every week. Um, so it, it is definitely worth the investment if, if you're thinking about doing digital art there, Hoot and Holler. Um, so if you can afford it, I would suggest getting an actual monitor uh, like a Cintiq. If you can't afford that, if that's too much, then get the biggest tablet that you can afford. Um, I would definitely recommend sticking with uh, Wacom or Wacom, like you mentioned before. They're pretty much the pioneers for this. There's a lot of other options out there that are cheaper, though. I just I don't have experience with them. Um, my right. three sons, 214, says, My grandson gave me a set of those pencils for Christmas. I love it. I guess they're referring to the matte pencils. Margaret asked, would you prefer to be drawing on a tilted surface? Um, I usually don't draw on a tilted surface, so it doesn't seem, I don't really, I don't mind working on a flat surface with this kind of medium. Some media I do like to have raised up a little bit, like pastel and watercolor, particularly. Um, Good question. I, for me personally, I, I prefer drawing on a tilted surface. But uh, for what I do, um, I draw on a flat surface. I'm sure I could rearrange things and figure out another solution for the Cintiq and the computer and all that stuff, but um, I don't mind working flat, but I would prefer to work at an angle. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Keith says the biggest Cintiq is now 31 inches. Mine is 21 inches, so that is massive. That, imagine another 10 inches diagonally on wow. that Cintiq. That, wow, is that is massive. I might need a bigger arm. Um, the 21 inch is plenty big. 
Um, and he points out you will need a second mortgage to get it. I'm not really sure how much they are, but uh, but he says I use a touchscreen tablet, but one day I will get myself a Cintiq. Yeah, me too. The, the benefit to drawing on a tilted surface is that the angle that you're looking at the artwork is more straight on. It's more like how a viewer is going to view your artwork. Uh, when you work on a flat surface, there's more opportunity for distortion. Uh, so if you've ever drawn on a flat surface and you're working on your drawing, you think it's great and you stand up and look at it and everything is elongated, <laughs> that's, that's because of the angle of looking at the artwork. So you have to just be mindful of that. Yeah, that's true. All right, the timer has the timer has elapsed. You can keep you can keep going well, maybe there. Maybe a couple more minutes. Yeah, you can get keep more. going in there. Yeah, looks like you're adding some more contour lines in there. Mm, just a more bits. definition. I am anxious to turn it over. Yeah, I know. I think everyone is waiting for the moment in which you will rotate the board. Yeah, we're almost there. Get a few fresh marks in here. Brenda says, Ashley, that drawing is incredible. I flipped my laptop and checked it out. All right. Well, that's a good sign. <laughs> that's a good sign. It's a little bit, feels mysterious. I'm not sure what's going to happen. <laughs> Meanwhile, that, all the blood is rushing to that guy's head. Yeah, he's dying for me to turn him <laughs> over. Uh. All right. Well, this has been a, a, a complex subject to tackle, and i um, hoping that having worked upside down for a little while gave us a little bit of an advantage. But also, uh, hopefully... My brain is stronger now in terms of uh, seeing shapes and lines out of out of context a little bit. Just the dis capturing those distortions that uh, that are really the key to um, you know how we see and recognize. We, we never really see we don't see objects very often from the same position um, re repeatedly. We learn to recognize them so. All those different variations in terms of shapes and angles and lines. All right. Let's see. We'll just do a little bit of just a little bit of blurring out here. It'll be time to take a look. All right. Are we ready? It's up to you. Are you ready? I don't know. I have no idea what it's going to look like. <laughs> so, oh, come on. You can see it. <laughs> a little bit in the dark. A little in the dark. All right. Now, we'll have to uh, untape them. So, here we go. All right. So, we got the drama of Peeling the tape, the re tape. removal Peeling here, too. The tape. There we are. Low and away so we don't tear. And the last strip, and we're almost there. Well, Jan and June are ready. All right, here we go. All right, and there he is. There's there the boy he playing is. the guitar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, little, oh, oh, you know what? You know what? I'm going to start drawing again. There we go. Just get a little darkness down there. Yeah, a little bit more definition. Yeah. There. All right. Very good. There we go. It's got so, kind of a smoky, airy feel. Oh, about yeah. It. Well, you know, it, it's similar to your value uh, study last last week a little bit where you had a limited number of values. Mm -hmm. And um, and I kind of have a limited number of values, really just three tonight. So we've got the white of the page, sort of the gray that we made uh, with our stump, and then the darker gray uh, that we made with our 2B pencil. So um, limited values. But, 
Well, that image has got a lot of cool stuff going on in there. Yeah. Um, all right. All right. Very good. CJ nice. says the drawing is amazing. Well, thank um, you so much. C, a scarf and tea says awesome. Buddy has, looks like drinks clanging against each other, like cheers. Maybe. Cheers. All uh, right. Super. Connie says cool. Jan says great. DB says looks great. Stella got, says, Stella says I got dizzy, <laughs> but uh, noise. I think that no noise and, and you know if you're still working on yours out there and you want to take it further just keep going even June, though our June even says though our 45 fun. minutes what a great drawing uh, melody says looks great ashley let's see thank you all thank you for your good. kind words clarissa has clapping emojis luna says that's amazing great job tom clark says wow that's fantastic and hoon holler says very nice so very very good all right. Well, I hope you Great guys exercise. have enjoyed this 45 minutes. And, um, you know, it's an exercise you can do um, in a shorter period of time also just with contour. So work in exercises like this and like a blind contour drawing um, just for that. It's like art boot camp just for brain training. All right. All right there well, we go. Very good. All right. Uh, now, now it's time. And to, now it's time to uh, reveal what uh, you guys have voted for for me and uh we'll take a look at that right now ladies and gentlemen it's time for let's get creative with your contestants matt and ashley and now tonight's let's get creative challenge all right so those of you who have seen at least one other episode mm -hmm. this season you know what's going on here um i'm getting ready to push the button that is going to reveal on the board around me what prompt you guys have voted for and this week the uh the winner won by a long shot so there are still some prompts that i really want you guys to vote on fruit loop i want you to vote on fruit loop yep and one plus one equals one you're gonna want to see that now you can't tell them what to vote for <laughs> i can Matt. influence this <laughs> um yeah so i i'm giving you suggestions on ones that you need to consider fruit loop and one plus one equals one but the one you've chosen this week is also good so let's see which one all it right is. what is that uh, or for next week anyway so we'll see where it lands and my eyes don't lie is the prompt that you guys mm. voted on now, what, what does, does that mean? What does that mean? Um, well, it means um, I will need to create a realistic drawing that fools the eye of the viewer into believing that the subject is actually there on the surface. Oh, wow. Um, so basically, we're going to do a Trump Loy drawing, uh, which literally means fool the eye. Um, I already know what medium I'm going to be working with. Uh, I'm going to be working on gray Strathmore sketch paper, and I'm mm -hmm. going to be using markers. Uh, that's alcohol-based markers and colored pencils. So I will not tell you what subject we're going to be doing, although I already know what that is. You'll have to just wait and see and keep an eye on the community tab, uh, for where, which is where I'll post the photo reference for next week. So uh, next week, you'll have another opportunity to vote. I'll probably put that up uh, next Tuesday like I did the week prior. And you'll be voting for what Ashley would do the week after that. All right. So, um, so the really, the prompt is my eyes don't lie, but you're going to make us feel like our eyes are lying to us. Exactly. This is like an old school deep fake. So yes. We don't need artificial intelligence. We draw our own deep fakes here, right? <laughs> right. Well, you know, I, was, I tried to come up with stuff that was, you know, fun for the phrases. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't going to say, my eyes lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my eyes don't lie, but uh, we're going to try to make right. your eyes lie to you next week. Well, so, that sounds um, like it's going to be a lot so of fun. So next week's definitely going to be on realism. So uh, mm. that's what we're going to be focused on. And uh, that's going to be a challenge given the time frame, but I think I will be able to pull it off with uh, the markers and the colored pencils. So we will see you hopefully next week. Uh, we're going to go get ready to get live over at the virtual instructor. Ashley's starting a brand new lesson series uh, where we're going to be working with oils, uh, oil paints, and uh, he's going to be working on black canvas right. using a scumbling technique to bring out the lighter values, which sh should be pretty cool. Um, I'm excited to watch it. 
and uh, that's going to start in just a few minutes. Remember, if you like this video, give it a like. That'll help others find it uh, and, and help the video get exposed to more people uh, here on YouTube. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and do that. It's completely free to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, click on the notification uh, so that notica notification bell, so you're notified uh, when new vid videos are posted. Guys, thanks for joining us this evening. I hope you have a wonderful, safe, and healthy week. And with that, we're going to go ahead and sign out for this evening. Do you have anything else, Ashley? Um, I would just say the same. I hope you guys have a great week. Try to draw a little bit every day, and we'll see you back here on next Wednesday. All right. With that, we're going to sign out and get ready for our live lesson. Good night, everybody.